Give the Lord a dance. 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 Go the your name, day day. All the way, all the way, we go to hell. your name, day Times and 
seized and seen your hands. You called for light out of darkness. You don't need a man to be the God you are. Oh, you have chosen to call me your own. You are God. You are from beginning to the from beginning end. to the end. No place for us. No place at all. the one that is God all by himself. You know, there is no argument. That's what we just sang. No one argues it. Even the devil knows that he's God all by himself. Can we go ahead and worship the one that is God? The one that remained God from eternity to eternity. The one that does not change. You know, tomorrow there will be a transition in our government. Another government will come in after four years, but this God has been, even before the beginning of the beginning, and he's still God and he will remain God. Can you go ahead and worship the one of whose government there is no end, the one that rules, the one that governs everything. Father, we give you praise. Are you not proud to have such a father that does not change with time? The father that his power does not diminish. Thank you for being our God. For we have worshipped in Jesus' name. At this time, can we humble ourselves before this God? Because the scripture also makes us understand that this God is also a holy God that cannot be whole, that cannot take an iota of sin from us. Can we ask him in any way we've not meet up with his standard and let mercy prevail? The Bible gave a description of who can come before the Lord. He said, he that has a clean hand, that have not lifted up his soul unto vanity. Can we ask the Lord that, Father, please, in any way we did not meet up with your standard, in any way we are not qualified, in any way we've defiled ourselves, that we ask this morning that let the voice of mercy speak for us as a person, as a family, as a church, in the name of Jesus.
time, can we open our mouth and ask the Holy Spirit to take charge? Can we confess to him that we don't even know what to do today? You know what? Because be, be, without his presence, this will just be like every other club gathering. Can we ask that we know he's here already, that he should take charge? That we ask him to come and moderate everything? That let the will of the Father be perfected even in this service? That we ask that he move on hinder, that he have his way on hinder? And let it be a heaven and earth. Let it be an experience. Let the perfect will of God be done. Even in this service this morning. Forever the same. 
again. Can we remember those languishing in the hospital? Some has been there for months, for years. Some say there is no hope. They've asked their owners to come and take them home to die. Remember, supposing it's your own brother or sister or mother or father, how will you have prayed? Can we intercede that the Bambin Gilead himself will stretch forth his hand wherever they are and let it be a massive healing this morning? the women that are still waiting on the law for the fruit of the womb. Those that are waiting for their life partner, waiting for admission, waiting for a change of job. Whatever the need is, let's ask the one that opened his hand and satisfied the desire of men, that let him have his way. to take two minutes and call on the name of Jesus. I don't know that area that you need intervention. I don't know that area that you want Jesus to take preeminence over. I want you to take two minutes and speak to God about it. Just call on his name. That situation that is standing as a mountain, talk to God about it. That situation that is weighing your heart down, that is bringing you sorrow, talk to God about it. I don't know it, but there's one thing I know. The Bible says that with our mouth, with our heart we believe, and with our mouth we confess unto salvation. If you are going to be saved, you have to use your mouth to confess that thing. So I want you to open your mouth to your maker. The name of Jesus is potent, has always been potent and will always be potent. Invite him into that situation right now. We have 30 more seconds. And I'm sure that he will show up. And when he shows up, you can be rest, you can be rest assured that there is already a solution. Thank you, Almighty Father. I decree and I decree, I decree and I declare that joy comes into your heart this morning in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Whatever it is that is bringing you sorrow comes to an end today in the name of Jesus. Jesus will show up for you in the name of Jesus. 
thank you, Almighty Father. Father, we pray that as your word will come, we ask that you speak to your people like never before in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we ask that you fill our hearts as the word will come. Lord, let it meet each and every individual at the point of their needs in the name of Jesus. That word that you have for someone today, let us not go back without receiving it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Almighty Father. For in Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Is someone glad to be in church this morning? I want you to walk up to one, two neighbors and tell them, I'm happy to see you in church this morning. I'm glad you made it to church this morning. The fact that you are seeing the person means that the person is alive, right? Uh -huh. We are not in the hospital. We are not struck down by any form of illness or the other. Father, we give you glory. Thank you, Almighty Father. For in Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Amen. This morning, we are going to be, we are not going to be preaching as it were. Hallelujah. We are not going to be preaching. What we are going to do is we are going to be studying the scriptures and we are going to do it together. Right? Um, what we are going to do is together we are going to read about four scriptures, four Bible passages and then we'll close. I believe so much in us reading the word and getting to see for ourselves first and right directly what the scripture is saying what the bible is saying to us so it's not going to be me just picking a scripture and interpreting it and then no at some point yes i might come in to explain a bit but we will read the scriptures we'll read a lot of the scriptures as we follow it it is my prayer that the holy spirit will minister to each and every one because it's, the scriptures are packed with a lot of insights a lot of revelation right and it might just be one verse for one person. But we have to read together. So I would like all of us to bring out our Bibles, if you have your Bible. If you have your Bible in church today, say praise the Lord. If you have your e-Bible, your big Bible, whatever Bible it is you have, say praise the Lord. So if you do not have a Bible here today, say praise the Lord. You don't have a Bible. You don't have it on your phone. Are you using iPhone? Because I know the iPhone, they have to pay for everything. Okay, you don't pay for Bible. Bible has been paid for. <laughs> okay, iPhone users, we see you. We see you in the house. Sister, you don't have a Bible. You share. No, we can get the Bible. Let me check. Okay, you have an extra Bible. Because I want every one of us to follow. I'll be reading from the message version. I'll be reading from the message version, but you can follow with whatever version you have. Do we still have another person who doesn't have a Bible? Who doesn't have a Bible? Okay, you can have mine. You can have mine. I would use my phone. So, if you have your Bibles already, you can open to Romans chapter 5. So, we will do Romans as much as God gives us the time. We have um, control time. I think we have about 20 minutes left. So, we will do Romans chapter 5, 6, 7, 8 as much as God gives us the time. But wherever we stop, we will continue from there in our private study. Hallelujah. Father, we ask that as your word come, we ask that you shed your light abroad upon our hearts in the name of Jesus. Reveal to us your purpose for this gathering, for this particular meeting in the name of Jesus. We, the Bible says that the entrance of your word bringeth light and understanding to the simple. We ask for light this morning. We ask for understanding even as we humbly submit ourselves to the listening of your word in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. Amen. So, I'm reading Romans chapter 5, verse 6. 
verses, I'll start from verse 1. And I want us to follow as much as possible. Let your gaze just be on the scriptures. The Holy Spirit is the one that will minister to us this morning. Let your gaze just be on the scriptures. And it says, I'm reading from the message version. By entering through faith into what God has always wanted to do for us. Set us right with him. Make us fit for him. We have it all together with God because of our master Jesus. And that's not all. We throw open our doors to God and discover at the same moment that he has already thrown open his door to us. We find ourselves standing where we always hoped we might stand. Out in the wide open spaces of God's grace and glory. Standing tall and shouting our praises. There's more to come. We continue to shout our praise even when we are hemmed in with troubles because we know how troubles can develop passionate patience in us and how that patience in turn forges the tempered steel of virtue, keeping us alert for whatever God will do next. In alert expectancy such as this, we are never left feeling shortchanged. Quite the contrary. We can't round up enough containers to hold everything God generously pours into our lives through the Holy Spirit. So in summary, he's saying that patience should what? No matter the trouble that we go through, that patience, that trouble should work in patience in us. Such that that patience then becomes and molds us into what? Gives us a kind of virtue that is in NX expectation of what God is said to do through us. So your troubles is not going to happen to you. You are not going through those troubles in vain. You are going in through those troubles because in the midst of those troubles, we should do what? We should learn patience. Hallelujah. So verse 6. Christ arrives right on time to make this happen. He didn't and doesn't wait for us to get ready. He presented himself for this sacrificial death. When we were far too weak, and rebellious to do anything to get ourselves ready. And even if we hadn't been so weak, we wouldn't have known what to do anyway. We can understand someone dying for a person worth dying for. And we can understand how someone good and noble could inspire us to selfless sacrifice. But God put his love on the line for us by offering his son in sacrificial death while we were of no use whatever to him. Hallelujah. Is someone following? Okay, so I'm in verse 9 now. Verse 9. Hallelujah, verse 9. Okay, so good. Now that we are set right with God by means of this sacrificial death, we recall in verse 5 to 8, he was giving us the account of the sacrificial death, how God looked at us and in our state he knows that we are too weak to redeem ourselves we are too weak to set ourselves right before god so he looked at he said even if we were not weak we don't even know what to do so god did what he put his son on this on the line putting his son as a sacrificial death for uh, uh, for us so that we can be received back onto him so that we can be set right on track with him hallelujah so verse 9 is saying now that we are set right with God by means of this sacrificial death, the consummate blood sacrifice, there is no longer a question of being at odds with God in any way. If when we were at our worst, we were put on friendly terms with God and by the sacrificial death of his son, now that we are at our best, just think of how... Hallelujah, sorry. Just think of how our lives will expand and deepen by means of his resurrection life. Now that we have actually received this amazing friendship with God, we are no longer content to simply say it in plodding prose. We sing and shout our praises to God through Jesus the Messiah. Hallelujah. I, I, I appreciate God for the way we poured out our hearts in praising God this morning. I appreciate the way we lifted our voices, we sang, we danced, and we praised God, and we worshipped Him. 
is an indication of the fact that we understand what God did for us. How he gave his son for us and then we are now in friendship with God. We are now in right standing with God. And so when we come to his presence, our hearts are pumped with joy. We are not, it's not dependent on the song that the choir is singing. It's coming from the place of your heart because you understand what God has done for you. You can shout in praise. You can sing from the depth of your heart. You can shout and sing because you understand what God has done for you and what God is still doing for you. Hallelujah. Now, let's go to verse 12. He says, you know the story of how Adam landed us in the dilemma we are in. First, sin, then death, and no one exempt from either sin or death. That sin disturbed relationship relations with God in everything and everyone. But the extent of the disturbance was not clear until God spelled out it out in detail to Moses. So death, this huge abyss separating us from God, dominated the landscape from Adam to Moses, even those who didn't sin precisely as Adam did by disobeying a specific command of God, still had to experience this termination of life this separation from God. But Adam, who got us into this, also points ahead to the one who will get us out of it. Hallelujah. So here you see the Bible talking about death and right from the times of Adam, you understand that death is not just the absence of life. It's not just the cessation of life. Hallelujah. Whenever you sin, what happens is that person dies immediately because at the instance of sin, there is already death. And that death is in, comes in two forms. The first is separation from God. Anyone who is separated from God, ultimately we then, the life will then be seized. Hallelujah. You then get separation from your life. The person then dies. But the most important death is not even the absence of life. It is what? Separation from God. Anyone who is existing or living on this earth and is already separated from God is living what? A wasted life. The person is already dead. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter how much the person, how much the person is accomplishing. No. The person is already what? Dead. So let's continue. Uh, so let's continue. Yet, the rescuing gift is not exactly parallel to the death dealing sin. If one man's sin puts crowds of people at the dead end abyss of separation from God, just think what God's gift poured through one man, Jesus Christ will do. There's no comparison between that death dealing sin and this generous life giving gift. The verdict on the one that sinned was the death sentence. The verdict on the many sins that followed this was wonderful life sentence. Hallelujah. If death got the upper hand through woman's wrongdoing, can you imagine the breathtaking recovery lives make? Sovereign life in those who grasp in both ends this wildly extravagant life gift. This grand setting, everything right that the one man Jesus provides. Hallelujah. If you are here today and you have not received Jesus into your life, you are missing out on what? eternal life. You are missing out on the very on, on the very wonderful gift that God has promised us, which is what? A life that is already set right with God. A life that is justified before God. Hallelujah. So he says, yeah, it is in nutshell. I'm rounding up chapter 5. Yeah, it is in a nutshell. Just as one person did it wrong and got us all in this trouble with sin and death. Another person did it right and got us out of it. But more than just getting us out of trouble, he got us into life. Hallelujah. I like that expression. Jesus did not just come to save. You know, it is possible that there is mud here and there is clean water here. And then my son is in the mud and I just get him out of the mud and I place him in the center and I walk away. Hallelujah. That is not what Jesus Christ came to do. Jesus Christ came, lifted us up from that mud, placed us in the what? In life, in, what, in, in, in this water, in this instance. Something more refreshing. 
a life more promising. Hallelujah. So he did not lift us up from the Mary clay and just no, drop, no, he gave us something more promising. He gave us what? The life, that same life that is in him. Praise God. But more than just getting us out of trouble, he got us into life. One man said no to God and put many people in the wrong. One man said yes to God and put many in the right. All that passing laws against sin did was produce more lawbreakers. But sin didn't and doesn't have a chance in competition with the aggressive forgiveness we call grace. When it is sin versus grace, grace wins hands down. All sin can do is to threaten us with death. And that's the end of it. Grace, because God is putting everything together again through the Messiah, invites us into this life, a life that goes on and on, a world without end. Hallelujah. Can you just thank God for the life that he has given unto you in one minute? Thank God for the life that he has given unto you. I believe we all here are, are, are children of God. We've given our life to him. We have been redeemed by, by sin, from sin. And he has set us right with God, giving us a life eternal. This life that I have is the life of Christ in me. This life that I have is the life of God. Oh, Zoe, 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 Zoe. This life, this life that I have is the life of God. So we, so we. to chapter 6. It's a continuation of where we are coming from. Chapter 6. He says, so what do we do? Keep on sinning so God can keep on forgiving. I should hope not. Hallelujah. I like to take that in KJV. Please go back to 1. He says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Verse 2 says what? Can I, he can I re see that echo? What? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Hallelujah. Amen. I'll go back to the message. It says, so what do we do? Keep on sinning so God can keep on forgiving. I should hope not. If we have left this country where sin is sovereign, how can we still live in the old house, therefore. Hallelujah. Amen. For those of us that know, when you relocate your, yourself and you say you are you Jackpa, you go to, you start living in the UK. Is it possible for you to live in the UK and still live in Nigeria at the same time? No. So if you pack out, it says, how shall we, after we have left this old country called sin, and we have moved on to the country of life, the new country of life. How can we then ex exist in both worlds? Not possible. Hallelujah. Amen. Not possible. Or he says, or didn't you realize we packed up and left there for good? Tell your neighbor, I have packed up from that place and I have left for good in the name of Jesus. I have packed away from the country of sin and I have left for good in the name of Jesus. Where do you now reside? We reside in the country of what? Of life in Christ Jesus. This is what happened in baptism. When we went under the water, we left the old country of sin behind. When we came out of the water, 
We entered into the new country of grace. A new life in a new land. Verse 3. That's what baptism into the life of Jesus means. When we are lowered into the water, it is like the burial of Jesus. When we are raised up out of the water, it is like the resurrection of Jesus. Each of us is raised into a light-filled world by our Father so that we can see where we are going and in our new grace, sovereign country. Could it be any clearer? Our old way of life was nailed to the cross. Somebody shout hallelujah. Our old way of life was nailed to the cross with Christ. A decisive end to that sin miserable life. No longer sins, no longer at sins every beck and call. What we believe is this. If we get included in Christ's sin conquering death, we also get included in his life-saving resurrection. We know that when Jesus was raised from the dead, it was a signal of the end of death as the end. Never again will death have the last word in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. When Jesus died, he took sin down with him. But alive, he brings God down to us from now on. Think of it this way. Sin speaks a dead language that means nothing to you. God speaks your mother tongue and you hang on every word. You are dead to sin and alive to God. That's what Jesus did. Talk to your neighbor. Say, sin speaks a dead language. I no longer respond to sin in the name of Jesus. Talk to your body. Say, sin speaks a dead language to me. I no longer respond to a he says, that means, verse 12, that means you must not give sin a vote in, in the way you conduct your life. Hallelujah. He says, you must not give sin a vote in the way you conduct your life. Hallelujah. Meaning that when there is an opportunity to vote for saying the truth and for telling lies, what will you vote for? When there's an opportunity to keep yourself or to sell yourself on the altar of fornication, what do you say? No. Hallelujah. You say no to sin. You no longer give sin, what? A voice in your life. Sin will no longer get the vote in your life. Don't give it the time of day. Don't even run little errands that are connected with that old way of life. Throw yourself all heartedly and full time. Remember, you've been raised from the dead into God's way of doing things. Sin can't tell you how to live. After all, you are not living under that old tyranny any longer. You are living in the freedom of God. Hallelujah. If there's any message that I want to, if there's any central theme that I want to give our scripture reading today, it is victory over sin. Hallelujah. He's saying that sin no longer holds what? A, a, a vote in your life. Sin no longer, you no longer respond to sin. Why? Because your life has been hidden in Christ Jesus. You have been raised up into the new country of grace. Hallelujah. So what is true freedom? So since we are out from under that old tyranny, does that mean we can live any old way we want? Since we are free in the freedom of God, can we do anything that comes to mind? Hardly. You know well enough from your own experience that there are some so-called art of freedom that destroys freedom. Hallelujah. This is the Bible saying it. He says that there are some so-called act of freedom that actually destroys freedom. Hallelujah. Offer yourselves to sin, for instance, and it's your last free act. Some of us, and I was sharing this with um, our workers and training students, some of us, we, part of our decision not to study in Unilag was because we felt that we were under the cage of our parents. And if I studied in Unilag, at any, at, with 200 naira transport, they will enter Unilag and they will come and visit me. And maybe they will catch me doing what I'm not supposed to do. Hallelujah. 
So we said, let's join into a faraway land. Where if they are coming, they must call you that we are coming. Oh. Hallelujah. But I thank God for his saving grace upon our life. Because we, might, we could have done things that would have destroyed our so-called act of freedom. Hallelujah. Imagine... I get into, I, I, because I want freedom, or I claim I'm in freedom, I then go about, I join bad gangs, maybe join cultists, and in the midst of all of this, maybe went to fight, went to do this, they break one of your hands. Is that not the last act of freedom? Hallelujah. There are some freedom that if you try it once, that's the end of your freedom. Just recently, I was reading a, a story of a Nigerian for, for um, a Nigerian, mixed up with other people, right? And for, she, she's studying in a university in UK. She's in a 300 level. And she got herself mixed up in what I cannot understand. So much more that she connived with her friends. They drugged someone. They wanted to steal his Rolex wristwatch. They saw his Rolex wristwatch on Instagram. They wanted to steal it, so they connived. She and her friend, they went. They, they planned all these dating things. They went to the man's house, they drugged him, and attempted to steal the Rolex wristwatch. When they saw that they could not overpower the man, they had already planned. They brought in two guys. Those guys came, they attacked the man, they injured him, killed him, and then they went with the Rolex wristwatch. Of course, the police got involved. After months and months of investigation, they convicted them of murder, of uh, robbery, and all of that. They sentenced that girl to seven years imprisonment because she was not the actual person that killed. They sentenced her to seven years imprisonment. The other person, 11 years. Another person, 35 years. The main person that held the dagger got life imprisonment. The girl was crying. Oh, my mother would be so disappointed in me. I was reading comments. Someone was saying, you are a stupid person. How can you that have this opportunity to study abroad, go and get yourself? We, we are here. We are dying. We are, we are doing everything to get there. You, you, people are saying a lot of things. Hallelujah. One act, she felt she was free. One act of freedom has sent her into what? Bondage. May it not be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. To shock you, the Rolex ritual that the guy was flaunting was fake. Hallelujah. Let's round up. Our time is up. We can't do seven and eight. We'll do seven and eight another time. Praise God. So he says, you know well enough from your own experience that there are some so-called act of freedom that actually destroys freedom. Offer yourself to sin, for instance, and it's your last free act. But offer yourselves to the ways of God and the freedom never quits. Have you ever heard somebody doing the work of God or serving God all at any and is put to shame? The Bible says that he will never allow the righteous to be put to shame, nor his seed beg for bread. All your lives, you've let sin tell you what to do. But thank God, you have started listening. Hallelujah. Somebody started listening. He says, thank God you have started listening to a new master. One whose command sets you free. To live openly in his freedom. I'm using this freedom language, no, verse 19, because it's easy to picture. You can readily recall, can't you, how at one time, the more you did what you did, just what you felt like doing, not caring about others, not caring about God, the worse your life became and the less freedom you had. And how much different is it now as you live in God's freedom? Your life's yield and expansive in loneliness. As long as you did what you felt like doing, ignoring God, you didn't have to bother with right thinking or right living or right anything for that matter. But do you call that a free life? What did you get out of it? Nothing. Nothing you are proud of now. Where did it get you? A dead end. But now that you are found, you don't have to listen to sin. Tell you what to do. And I've discovered the delight of listening to God. Telling you what, telling you, what a surprise. A whole yield put together life right now. With more and more of life on the way. Work hard for sin your whole life. And your pension is death. May it not be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen.
But God's gift is real life, eternal life, delivered by Jesus, our master. Shall you rise on your feet? Can you jump on your feet? He says, work out for sin and your pension is death. It means that as you are doing it, it's saving up somewhere. It's saving up somewhere until death eventually happens. May it not be our portion in Jesus' name. Can you lift up your hands to heaven and say, Father, help me not to be a slave to sin. In the name of Jesus, you have shown me from your word that you have given me life abundant. I will not be a slave to sin. In the name of Jesus. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I want you to pray, pray, talk to your God, talk to your God. I am a child. This morning, it is my prayer that the Holy Spirit will minister those words into your hands in the name of Jesus. We are delivered from sin in the name of Jesus. We are delivered. We are no longer slaves to sin. We are no longer controlled by our emotions. We are no longer controlled by our flesh. We live a life filled with Christ. We live a life in the new country of life. In the grace. We live a new creation life. We are no longer someone here who all these things were explaining feels like gibberish to you because you feel that you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior and so this promise of a new life is looking like something very distant I'm happy to announce that Jesus is here today and is here to listen to you if only you will believe with your hearts and that you will confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord salvation is yours if we have such a person here today, so I want to join us in enjoying life in the new country. You want to jack up from the old country of sin. You want to migrate from the old country of sin and move into this new country of grace. To move into this country where Jesus is Lord, where Jesus is Master, where is the King of all. If we have such a person here, please come and let's pray together. I'm no longer. I say to see. I am a child of God. I am, I am a child, child of God. Oh, I'm no longer, I'm no longer. I say to see. I am no longer. I am. into this week I want you to say to yourself I no longer respond to the advances of sin in my life I will no longer respond to sin I will no longer obey sin I am no longer a slave to sin say to yourself when you wake up every morning say I have a new master and that master is Jesus whatever he tells you to do I will do. Whatever he tells me to do, I will do. I will not give sin a vote of confidence in my life. I will not even send, I will not go on those little errands for sin. Those things that draw us closer to sin will step away this moment. In the name of Jesus, we enjoy life in Christ Jesus. I'm no longer I'm no longer I said Thank you. Thank you for your word. You have spoken to us. We have read your word. We ask that as we go, these words will not depart from us in the name of Jesus. 
We ask that you, the Holy Spirit, will continue to minister each and every word upon our heart as we meditate. The Holy Spirit would reveal to us the pattern, the instruction for our individual lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Almighty Father. Amen. For in Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. How many of us were blessed? Let's just stretch forth our hands towards our preacher for today. Let's just pray that, you know, that even as the Lord has used him today to, you know, to bless us, even as the Lord has used him today to empower us, to remind us, to inspire us, to correct us, you know, let's pray that the Lord will continually use him for his glory. The Lord will continually use him for his glory, that he will never be found wanting where the children of God have been mentioned or where the children of God are assembling, he will never be found wanting. That these words he has spoken will not stand against him on judgment day. That these words that he has spoken, that the Lord will make it, you know, make him find expression in his life, every day of his life, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Offering time. It's offering time. Let's um, put our hands into our pockets and bring out uh, a token of our love and appreciation to God. You know, something that is worthy to be given unto the Lord. Uh, do we have any tithers in the house? Anyone who wants to pay their tithe? A tithe is a tenth of your, uh, of your income. So if there's anyone that wants to give their tithes to the Lord, can I just see you wave your hand real quick? All right, so... Um, also, if you're interested uh, by, um, in paying your tithes um, electronically, you, know, you can make a transfer to uh, the church bank account. Praise the Lord. The bank account will be displayed on the screen. Um, the Stambic um, IBTC uh, bank account. Um, even as you display it and you pay your offerings, God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Please let's rise even as we give to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, your name is my Imela. 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 Oh, your name is my Imela. 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 Oh, your name is my Imela. Oh, yeah, the bells are... 